Welcome to Voice of the Crusader. My name is Yaakov Ben Israel, and I'm the elder priest of the Culture Center of NCCI, the New Covenant Congregation of Israel. We're located at 3901A Covington Highway in Decatur, Georgia. This program is all our programs are uh, designed to give you insight into the scripture as to the past, present, and future of this so-called Negro, as well as to the historical events that has taken place and the events that's taking place today and the events that shall take place upon the earth according to the scripture. Many people talk about serving the true and living God, but when it come right down to it, the Messiah said, watch. Because when you begin to see certain things come to pass on the earth, look up because your redemption is near right at the doors. And people today aren't doing too much watching. If they were, they'd be talking more about this new currency that uh, the Roman Empire, Europe, is putting on the uh, is put on the market that did they did did put on the market January 1st of uh, uh, this year. The currency called the euro is the new world currency and you might want to get into the scripture in the prophet Daniel and read the prophet Daniel and see what uh, Daniel and John the Revelator say was going to happen to the nation and especially the nation of Israel, the chosen uh, uh, people of, uh, 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 of God. Like I said before, this program is designed to give you insight into these things. So if you have any questions, any comments that you need, to, that you'd like to make, give me a call at 404-892-5614. That's 404-892-5614. You know, you hear a lot of things just coming from people that are, are of organized religions. But when we did, when we look at these things, you must understand one thing, that these things was organized by men, and they had nothing really to do with uh, uh, the worship of God. What it had to do, what religion has to do with is power and wealth, which is power. This is why, if you notice, the churches are getting larger and larger and larger, but they all belong to uh, 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 and uh, uh, I should say, they all belong to an organization. All of them are different organization that was set up by man. The Baptist was set up by one man. Seven Day Adventist, Jehovah's Witch, you name it. And all of these denominations were set up by man. And they're less than 600 years old. And all of them are geared for one, about, well, all of them are about one thing, money. Money is power, and man is trying to get his, his hand on as much as he can. I guess he think he's going to buy his way into heaven. As a matter of fact, this is what is being taught in the church, that, you know, people are paying their tithes so that they can receive a blessing. They're trying to buy their way into heaven, but it's not so. Like the Messiah said, no man goes to heaven except him who come down from heaven, even the son of man that is in heaven. But this is the lie that has been told to us by these Christians. But you have to remember one thing. These Christians don't do anything God said. These Christians turn around and change everything that God uh, told uh, our people to do. These Christians are the ones that have us in captivity, and the Christians are the ones that are putting together this new world order that's spoken about is uh, that the Messiah is a war in our people of in St. Matthew 24th chapter. So if you think you're going to escape these things that's going to come up on the earth or whether you think you're going to go through them or however you think you're going to fare, why don't you give me a call at 4489256614 uh, and we're going to chit chat about these things. Now, uh, according to the church, the church is going to what they say is that they're going to be taken away and won't have to go through this great tribulation period that's going to come uh, 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 upon the face of the earth. And But I'm going to read something to you out of the prophet uh, John and see uh, 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 if these things are so. I'm going in the book of Revelations and I'm going to read some things out of Revelations chapter, uh, chapter 7. And, uh, and we see what we can get out uh, up on. So, but let me set this up first. In chapter 6, chapter 6 in, Revela in the book of Revelation is the wrath of Satan being poured upon the earth. It's the opening of the seven seals. Now I'm going to read something to you uh, 
uh, uh, in chapter 7 after the sixth seal was opened, the seven seals now, and I'm going to read some things that took place after the six seals were, were opened. It said, this is Revelation uh, 7 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, which are the four great armies that's going to be up on earth at this time, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried to, and he cried, cried to, the, to the four angels who, had, who was given to hurt the earth and sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees to we seal the servants of our God in their forehead. All of God's servants had to be sealed before the lambs, before Yahweh began to pour his wrath upon the, uh, upon the earth. Verse 4, And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and they were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. It didn't include the other nations that were sealed from the wrath uh, of Yahweh that was going to be poured upon this earth. Uh, it was only the whole the 144,000 from the 12, 12,000 from each one of the tribes of Israel that were sealed. Why? Because Yahweh had raised up our, we wrote the book, our people went and talked to nations, and uh, uh, our people were told in the book of Deuteronomy that we shall be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. Even the prophet Isaiah said that we were going to be, that the children of Israel was going to be named the priest of the Lord. Now let me skip down now to verse 9 here. It says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sit upon the throne and to, a, to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped Elohim, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might to be to our Elohim forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And when do they come? Now the elder wanted to know where was all these people. Now he knew about the sealing of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, but what he didn't know about was this great multitude of people of all nations, tongues, and languages. But let's see where they came from. See, the church like to tell you, they're going to be whisked off in the Never Never Land before this take place. But let's read it and see. And uh, verse 13, this is Revelation 7 and verse 13, it says, And one of the elders answered unto me, saying, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said unto him, Sir, you know. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, the elder said that these people came out of great tribulation. But the church says, no, we're going to miss all of that. We're going on off into heaven and we ain't going to be bothered with none of that stuff. Well, it's a reason for that lie. The reason for that lie is because of some things that the adversary, the devil, had to say back here in the, uh, in the prophet Isaiah. Let me read this to you. Once again, the number here is 44892. 5614. You call in and let me know what your beliefs are about this, or we can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind from Genesis to Revelations or anything that comes came up in the last 6,000 years of man's history upon this earth, and we can chit-chat about that. Uh, like I keep saying, the Bible is a history book, and man is used to teach religion out of, out of this book simply because we are foolish people who don't go and do the necessary research ourselves. But let me read something to you why these Christians say that they're going to be, that they're going off to heaven. This is in Revelation 14, Revelation 14 and verse 12. It says, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground that did weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also in the mount in the congregation in the sides of the north. Now, if you read Psalms 48, you'll find out that he's saying he's going to sit in the holy city of Jerusalem. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. 
You see what Satan says he's going to do? He's going to be just like God, having everybody worship him. He's going to ascend into heaven. He's going to ascend above the heights of the cloud. He's going to be just like the Most High. That's the same lie he's telling his, uh, his children, that they're going to ascend above the heights of the cloud, that they're going up in heaven, but they can't show me where it's written. But let me go and read some things to you, show you where they get that, how they concocted this lie. Uh, uh, I'm going in the book of uh, 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 Corinthians. I'm going in 1 Corinthians, then I'm going in Thessalonians and read some of their favorite pieces of scripture here and see if we can bust that junk up uh, 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 as soon as I can find Corinthians. This is 1 Corinthians, and I'm going to pick this up at 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter uh, uh, 15, and I'm going to pick this up at verse 51. Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not, not all die, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption, corruptible rather, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall be have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that death that is written, death is swallowed up in the victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So what it said was that at the last trump, we were going to be caught up uh, 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 and meet the Lord in hell. Well, let's go a little bit further with this. Let's go back to uh, 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 Thessalonians. Let's go and read what it was what Paul had to say in Thessalonians about the same thing. And then we're going to go and read some other things that show that how they got this thing all out of kilter by man uh, 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 translating this thing here instead of reading the word of God. This is in 1 Thessalonians uh, uh, chapter 4. And I'm going to pick this up at... Uh, at uh, verse 13, it says, this is our First Thessalonians 4 and verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them, them which are asleep, meaning dead, that you saw or not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yahshua died and rose again, even so them which, which sleep in him, will the Adonai bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Adonai, that we which are alive and remain at the coming of the Messiah shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Adonai himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in the anointed one shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Adonai in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Adonai. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now Paul said, uh, the Messiah is going to descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the trump and the, and the archangel and so forth, and we're going to be caught up. The dead in the Messiah is going to rise first. Then those that are alive and remain is going to be caught up together with, with, the, uh, uh, with the Lord uh, uh, in, in, in the clouds, right? Well, where are you going to hang out at? In the clouds? In the air? Airplanes fly in the air, birds fly in the air, but now let me read something. Let me, let's, we have to go through this step thing by steps in order for you to understand uh, uh, how to deal with this situation when people come up with that junk. Now let's go into the book of Acts and what we're going to do is we're going to deal with, uh, with, uh, with, 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 with the Messiah uh, when he was uh, not a Messiah. Had, had went up on the mount after he had appeared to his apostles and so forth and so on. He was up on the Mount of Olives with his apostles. And let's read and see what happened while uh, he was up on that, um, that mount. And this is in the first chapter of Acts. And uh, 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 I'm going to pick this up at verse Acts chapter 1 and uh, verse... Uh, verse... Uh, Verse uh, 4, 
it says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, Ye have heard of me. For Johanan truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Adonai, will you at this time restore the kingdom again to Israel? Now the apostles knew that the kingdom that the Messiah set up was going to be given to Israel. This is why they asked him, say, are you at this time is going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Let's read his answer. Uh, verse 7, he says, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons, which the Father has put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness of me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the utmost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud, received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Two angels were standing by them, right? Which also said, You men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into the heaven? This same Yahshua, which is taken up, up from you into heaven, so shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go to heaven. In other words, he was going to come right back to the Mount of Olives with the clouds of heaven. This is where he left from, and this is where he's going to return to. Now to verify that, what, I'm going, what we're going to do is we're going to go back here in the prophet Zechariah, and Zechariah is going to tell you uh, exactly uh, 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 where the Messiah is going to come come to. This is Zechariah chapter 14, and I'm going to put, pick this up at verse 1. Behold, the day of Yahweh comes, and your spoils shall be divided in the midst of you. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravaged. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Now what he's referring to here is the battle of Armageddon that's going to take place in, uh, uh, in the valley of Megiddo, uh, 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 right outside the city uh, uh, of Jerusalem there. Uh, verse 3. It says, uh, Then shall the, the, the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. That's when he stood forward in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, the same place he rose from. See, what's going to happen is that uh, when the Messiah, when the armies invade Jerusalem and the Messiah uh, uh, start to come uh, 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 with the cloud, come uh, out of the cloud. The dead in the Messiah is going to rise. He's coming down. The dead is going to meet him up, rise up to meet him. Then those that are alive and attain the salvation, they're going to rise up to meet them. But the Messiah is not going off to heaven. The Messiah is coming back to this earth to set up a kingdom. And let me go ahead and finish this up. And his feet shall stand in that day on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall clave in the midst to, thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the mount, valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach to Azal. Yes, you shall flee. Like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Isaiah, king of Yehuda, and Yahweh my Elohim shall come and all the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known unto the Adonai, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light, and, and it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea, in summer and winter shall it be. And, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth, and that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. Now, this tells me that the Lord is coming back to Jerusalem, and he's going to put down all rule on this earth, and he's going to be king over the whole earth. And when they talk about living waters going out uh, toward the former sea and the latter sea, what you do is take your book and get in the book in the prophet Ezekiel and pick that up at about the, the 40th chapter of Ezekiel. 
that is the millennial temple that the Messiah is going to, going to build. And if you read up to the end of uh, uh, the book of uh, Ezekiel, you'll find out that he's going to talk about these living waters that's going to come out from under the, uh, the right side of the temple and run down through the city and so forth and so on, and then head to the sea for the healing of the waters on the earth. We must understand that man was created on this earth, and man is going to spend his days upon this earth. It's not until after uh, 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 the 7,000 year period, uh, 6,000 years for Satan and 1,000 years for the Messiah to reign on this earth. It's not until after that that the new heavens and new earth is going to be created. See, the Messiah has to come to redeem our people out of captivity and to set us back in our own land and to set righteousness in the earth and give man a chance to live according in peace and prosperity, living by the way that God uh, uh, spoke out of his mouth to our people when we came out of Egypt. This is why he told, her, uh, told us, say, look, as you do, so shall the stranger among you do. But we don't do that today. When we look at what we do, we follow our masters regards to through hell and high water, we'll follow our master instead of reading this book and doing what the scripture said. Once again, the number here is 4489256. One four. If you don't want to talk about what I'm talking about, call in and talk about what you want to talk about, and we'll see what kind of understanding uh, uh, we can get out of uh, out of many things. It's because it's a lot of things that people believe that's not necessarily the truth. As a matter of fact, we as a people are the biggest golfers in the world. We are the biggest golfers in the world. Uh, just because we came from Africa does not mean that we are Africans. If you think so, the next time you, you talk with an Ethiopian, I'm going to give you some names that you ask the Ethiopians about and see what they, what they tell you. Ask them about the Falasha, which is an a Ethiopic or Swahili word that means Indian resident. Ask them about the Bantu the Limbo people, the Ashanti, and the Moors, and you'll find out that those people, the names that I just named, those people are the, uh, of the 12 tribes of Israel that was put out, of, that were put out of the land between 70 and 100 AD by Titus the Roman, and we were sold to the Africans as slaves, and the Africans in turn uh, sold us back to the British, Spanish, Portuguese, and Dutch for slaves in America. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, they got a day coming up not too long from now they call Columbus Day but if you check back in that you find out that even Christa, the, the mighty Christopher Columbus that they talked about had part in the slave trade he slaved, he, he, uh, he, were the one, he was one of the, uh, the captains that, that, that uh, bought and sold slaves from the Portuguese uh, uh, to the Portuguese rather from the Africans to the uh, Portuguese and uh, as a matter of fact, it's a proven fact they say he discovered America, but it's, a, it's been a proven fact that man is going to have to rewrite his history simply because they found bones of Europeans over here in America that predated Christopher Columbus, and when they checked those bones, the, the cause of death of those bones, we find out that uh, 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 they had to uh, resurrect the way they had to kind of try to pamper that lie that they had went back in Europe and told when they said that they came over here and contracted syphilis from the American Indians. No, they didn't. They came over here and gave syphilis to the American Indians. As a matter, and when they dug up those bones, it proved that those those Euro Gentiles that they had dug up did die from syphilis, and the, just like the ones that they dug up over there in Europe. So we can very well see that it's been many lies that has been told us, but what, what you might want to do is you might want to compare these things with what's said in the Bible. And if you compare these things with what's said in the Bible, you'll find out that something kind of stinks in Denmark in this time of year. But where do we get these things from? We got these things from the nation of people that we call uh, uh, the Euro Gentiles who Christianize us into this garbage that we're in today. Once again, the phone number here is 4489256145. Now, it was established, it was established in the book of Zechariah 14, in, cha in Zechariah in chapter 14, that the Messiah is coming back to, uh, 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 to rule over the, uh, 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 rule the earth for a thousand years, and, uh, 
this will be the kingdom that heaven is going to set up here on this earth and it's going to uh, this is uh, it's going to give man an opportunity to uh, live and peace and prosperity on this earth and give a man the opportunity to uh, attain salvation we have to remember that uh, that uh, uh, Paul said glory and honor to the Jew first how can the nations receive salvation and the Jews don't receive salvation first if they do so then that will make the second chapter you might as well take the second chapter of Romans and tear it out the book and throw it, throw it away and you know when you look out on the earth today we call it a crime but the earth is laden with sin but what you have to do is look at see who it is that runs the earth it's the majority of the earth is run by the largest religious body of people on the earth. They're run, the largest part of the earth is run by Christians, and we know it. But let's but look at what's going on in the earth. There's violence, sin, that's running rampant every place. And as far as we're concerned, they're locking our males up and trying to destroy our family uh, our structures through uh, 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 dealing with our women instead of dealing directly with us. But let's see what the nation was going to do and what was going to cause this great problem here up on the earth. And I, I'm going to read some things to you out of Prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 24, and I'm going to pick this up at verse 1. It says, Behold, Yahweh makes the earth empty and makes it waste and turn it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priests. As with the servant, so with his master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of interest, so with the giver of interest unto him. In other words, the day of the Lord is going to affect everybody on the face of the earth. This is our Isaiah 14 and verse 3. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. For Yahweh has spoken this, uh, this word. The earth mourneth and fades away. The royal language and fades away. The hearty people of the earth do language. The earth all, now listen to this now. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. Well, when you look back at the church, and you can go into Leviticus 23rd chapter in the Bible, and read the things that Yahweh told our people to do forever, you're going to find out that the nations aren't doing these things. And seeing that they were grafted into our tree, according to Romans 11 chapter, seeing like they, as they was grafted into our tree, then according to the word of God, he said, as you do, so shall the stranger that dwell among you do. Well, we're not doing these things today. We keep the things that were set up by you or Gentiles, and if you do the research and find out and, and check out all the holidays that the church keep today, you'll find out that they were instituted by man. They had nothing to do with what the Word of God had to say. Man, that's why we were told in Isaiah 24 that they changed the ordinances. They changed all of God's law and told us we didn't have to do that. Then they broke the everlasting covenant. The everlasting covenant was the covenant of Sabbath. It was the first thing that Yahweh blessed and sanctified after he had created everything. And it was this that was given to us as a token. And he told them, say, you shall know them because my people keep my Sabbath and not man's Sabbath. Once again, the number here is 4489256143. And you, you need to be aware of the things that's taking place on the earth. I know a lot of our ministers are not talking about this new world order. But you need to get back and do some study on this new world order and find out that this is the tenth time 
that they've tried to bring up a new world order since Rome fell in 476 AD. And the prophet Daniel told you that, the, that there would be ten, uh, 10 kings that would come up to try to revive the Holy Roman Empire. Hitler was the ninth one. The tenth one is on the scene today. And when you consider that Yahweh told our, our, our father Abraham in Genesis 15, 13, that we were going to be here 400 years and afterwards uh, will we come out with great substance and this nation will be judged. When you consider those things and consider the things that the, uh, that the prophets John and uh, Daniel say was going to happen on the earth, if you look out on the earth, you can see these things being slowly put in place. And these are the signs that the Messiah told us to watch for. The reformation of this final new world order. It will be the largest organization upon the earth and it's the one that the Messiah is going to destroy at his coming. He has to set righteousness in the earth and the only way to set righteousness in this earth is to destroy the wicked. This is why people tell me, say, well, you know, one day it's going to be millions of people missing off, the, off this earth, referring to the fact that they, are, they, they, they assume that they're, they're, they're going to heaven. But uh, if they be missing off this earth, when the Messiah comes, it's because they're going to be dead and going to sleep that thousand years and be woken up and thrown into that and face the great white throne judgment and be thrown in that lake of fire. And people just don't seem to understand that there is more to the book than the last than the New Testament. And if you don't go back and lay a foundation, people can tell you anything and you will be just like the rest of us are. You'll be part of these gophers. We'll go for anything that's told us uh, uh, pertaining to the religion, which we have done, and we'll not go and do the research that's necessary for, uh, 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 for us to do. And when we do, some of us do the research, what we do is we end up saying, well, it, is, it makes no difference. Well, if it doesn't make any difference, why don't the nations never tell you what nationality the Messiah was? Huh? Why don't they ever tell you that he was a black Hebrew Israelite? Why is it that during the Renaissance they took and, and painted all of the apostles and all of the people, the holy people in the Bible, the Hebrews, they painted them all white. Why did they do that when knowing all the time that these people were black? And when you go to Europe and go to the Vatican and check out the shrine of the Black Madonna and many other uh, uh, statues, black statues that they have, they let you know that the Hebrews were black. But we in America, we don't get a chance to see those things simply because of the, uh, of the way that the news is censored. But maybe what you might want to do is invest in you a small uh, uh, a shortwave radio and start picking up some programs that come from uh, out of this country. And you'll find out a lot of things that's being taught by the, uh, that's been fed into the news media and been taught to us in church. A lot of these things are just not true. Uh, once again, the, the number here is 404-892-5614. Give us a call and we'll talk about what, uh, whatever is on your mind. But I still think it's a shame that we'll sit around all these hundreds of years we've sat around here and been so quick to forgive and so quick to accept things that was given to us by the people that brought us over here as captives. And even though we've tried to attain to the American dream, we haven't, in 400 years, we haven't attained to the American dream. But it has to be a reason for that. Uh, uh, the American dream is reserved for uh, the people that call themselves Americans, we were not considered Americans according to the Constitution of the United States was written of the people, for the people, and by the people of the United States of America. And at that time, we were not considered people, we were considered property. And today, we are still considered property. They move us from this person to that person. These people here own the house, we, we, we buy for, for a while, and then you look up, some other people own the house. But they're all Euro Gent 90% of them are Euro Gentiles, and we have to consider this thing. We have to consider that today, but seeing that we gave up the economic base in our neighborhood, today we become sharecroppers. In other words, we go, we go across the tracks, 
make our money, we don't bring it back and spend it in our neighborhoods so our neighborhood can prosper. What we do is we uh, we take it up in the Buckhead, Sandy Springs, any place that you have Gentiles are set up places of business, we go and add to their tax structure and then come back into the neighborhood and ask yourself one question. When was the last time you saw a street sweeper in your neighborhood and you pay, you pay taxes for these services? But these are some things that has been taken away simply because we do not have the economic structure in our neighborhood that we had before. And they're not, uh, the nations are not going to let you, allow you to have uh, this economic structure. This is why when you go back and look into the first, uh, the first black mayor that was elected in this country here, it was in Gary, Indiana. And what did they do? They moved the tax structure all the way across the bridge and we gave, uh, started another city and we gave up our tax structure. I think we got a call on the line. Go ahead, call to you in there. Hi, I just wanted to basically verify what you were trying to say about how transcendence belongs to the propane world and that basically we have to rely upon our insights given through our unspoken words that's given to us rather than relying upon these mandates and um, because our mind is basically parallel to everything that's going on in the universe and is affecting everything. Um, I believe that we're responsible, and if we don't all come above this mental ditch that we're in, it's basically our responsibility, and we need to be aware. Okay, now, what is our responsibility, dear? Our responsibility would be to obey our unquestionable commands. Okay. Okay, in other words, obey the written word of God, am I correct? From what a feeling. Um, an internal, basically unspoken word, something that you feel is your command before you feel your, any of your ulterior motives. Let me ask you a question, my sister. Let me ask you a question. Uh, Say, for instance, uh, you married into a family that had seven boys, and you married the oldest boy, and the oldest boy died, and you didn't have any children. What do you, what, what do your inner feelings tell you that uh, that's supposed to be done about that situation? To keep him always in your heart and to always rely upon principles that you held as good while he was alive and while he was alive also to um, pull out everything that's good because I believe happiness isn't a mood or something that happens, it's something that just basically is just as the higher spirit it just is. Okay, okay. Well, let me show you something, my, uh, my sister. Um, see, that emotion thing, how we feel in our heart, that's what got us over here slaves. What the law says is this. If a woman marries into a family and uh, the brother, the, she married the oldest brother and they don't have a child and the oldest brother dies, what's supposed, and they don't have a child, what's supposed to happen is that the brother next to him is supposed to take her and marry her and give her a child so that his brother's house will continue. See, it has nothing to do with emotions, what it has to do, how we feel, what it has to do with is what is written down. And, and like I said before, the reason why we were brought over here as slaves is because when Yahweh gave us his law, he told us it's our wisdom, our knowledge, and our understanding among all the nations. But what we did, what we decided we wanted to do is this. We decided we wanted to do things like the nations do, the same way we, uh, that we do today. And that's what got us kicked out of our land. That's what brought us, so had a, that's what's had us up out of our land for the past 2,000 years, simply because we followed what we thought was right or what we felt was right and, uh, and it caused them problems. And uh, I always, I, what I like to say is this. We say, well, I believe this in my heart. 
Well, I can't trust my heart because when I was six years old, I, my heart told me I was in love with my kindergarten teacher. When I was 12 years old, my heart told me I was in love with this little girl who lived around the corner there uh, uh, named Mary Jane Wheeler. See, When I was 17 years old, my heart told me I was in love with a girl from New York City. Every time I turn around, my heart is telling me, well, this is the way you feel. If it feels good, do it. Well, all of this hasn't done anything to me but caused me some problems. But what it did was this. It gave me the experience to grow into a position of where I can say, well, I don't trust my heart. What I do is this. I watch a person's actions and see if a person's actions is in line with the word that God has to say. And if it's in line with the word that God has to say, then we can deal because a divided house won't stand. And the reason why many marriages don't work is because, number one, the first thing we do is once we get married, we allow the romance to go out of our marriage. And then when you have one person believe in this and one person believe in that and we are not standing on common ground, then what happens is this. We find that it's a schism that's created in the family and eventually that schism gets bigger and bigger and bigger and no one is really satisfied. This is the reason why we have so many different broken homes and so forth and so on. So it has nothing to do with the inner man or what we think in the inner man, what it has to do with is what was actually spoken by the mouth of God to, uh, uh, to, to the holy prophets. Because if we deal with that, if we deal with the law, which God say is his righteousness, if we deal with that and deal with the rest of the instruction that was written down in the book, then we'll find that we'll be closer to our God and all of us will see, just like Isaiah said, there's not one righteous, no, not one. We're all like filthy rags before our Creator. I think we got another call on the line. Go ahead, call you in there. Hello, uh, Elder, how you doing? Oh, fine, how you doing, my dear? Uh, you spoke on marriage a moment ago. Can mm -hmm. you tell me what uh, a Hebrew Israelite marriage should be like down to what they should wear? What's the dress? You know. The dress that he did for light should wear? Well, what I, what I look at is this, my sister. You wear what you want to wear. <laughs> if you feel like you want to dress, let me tell you something. See, a lot of people get off, off into our culture, the Hebrew Israelite culture. But can't nobody show me the Hebrew Israelite culture? All of the people in the Middle East wore the same kind of garments. We just wore more plain stuff, you know, without a lot of pictures and so forth and so on. Uh, that's what the Hebrews did. But uh, uh, as far as the wedding is concerned, whatever you feel comfortable in, as long as you cover it, whatever you feel comfortable in, then that's what you, that, that, that's what you uh, get married in. Now, as far as the wedding is concerned, uh, we don't have nothing to do with the wedding. A wedding is a very, very private thing. When you check in history, uh, you find out that what ha a lot of uh, weddings were, uh, 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 marriages rather, was arranged by the family. And when the father of the bride took the bride to the, groom, the groom's house and she was accepted by the groom and his family, then the marriage was consummated. Vows were exchanged between the two individuals that was getting married. The re didn't nobody have anything to do with that except to witness. The scripture says, what God is joined together, let no man put asunder. Yeah. But see, since we've been in this country here, we've learned the ways of strangers. They say, okay, you gotta go get a license. You go get your license, yeah. then you go to the preacher, and he say, By the, listen what he says now. The scripture says, what God has joined together, let no man set asunder. All marriages are bound in heaven. But what the, what, what the person that marry you say is this, by the power that's invested in me by the state of Georgia, I now pronounce you mad as man and wife. So you're married according to the state. But the thing of it is, is this. Are you married as far as spiritual things are concerned? If you're married, how can 
two walk together and, and, and be, uh, 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 disagree. You got to have rules and regulations that's got to govern your house in order to keep peace in your house. And those rules and regulations are written down in the first five books of the Bible. See? When pe people don't want to keep the law, and they say we're not under law, we're in grace, but when you get into the Bible and read the law, I don't find anything with the law. I don't find any uh, wrong with the law. I don't find anything wrong with the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments with the law. The rest of it, it broke down into 613 laws, statutes, and judgments, which was a total culture that was uh, imposed upon us by the true and living God. And this is the reason, the reason why we, we end up in slavery is because we didn't keep that culture. Because it was God's righteousness. Once they took us out of our land and took the righteousness away from us, then who is it that was going to represent the true and living God? Why do you think people go to church on Sunday instead of Saturday? They know that Saturday is Sabbath. Why do you think they go to church? Why do you think they went through that lie about Christ born December 25th and so forth and so on? Yahweh said don't make nothing to represent him. Why do you think that these Euro Gentiles came up with that little fish thing we see on the back of these cars now and that cross and so forth that they deal with? These things are effigies. These things represent Christianity the same way that a crescent moon in a star represents Islam. The same way that the green man that they call Buddha represents Buddhism. You see, so man has set up all his idols and images right around us, and we don't see these things. Did you know that when people kept New Year's Day that was actually in celebration of Janus, the two-faced the God that looks into the past and into the future, but we don't do these things. Uh, uh, we, don't, we don't read these things. We do these things rather because we don't go back and study and find out uh, where we got these things. We got all these things from our enemies. I think we got another call on the line. Go ahead, call it. You're on there. Hi, Elder. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, how you doing? Oh, fine. How you doing? I'm okay. I just want to ask you a question. Why is it that they always change our identity? I mean, we've been Negroes, uh, Black Americans, Afro-Americans. Now we are like African Americans, you know. Why is it that it's only the blacks that they change like that? Well, my I'm dear, to listen to your answer. Uh, 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 well, my dear, that's for one reason. That's to hide us in the earth. The best way to hide a, a people is to take away their identity. Let me read something to you. Um, that uh, that Yahweh said was going to happen to our peace people simply because uh, uh, we didn't uh, we didn't do what he said. I'm going to pick this up, and, and this is where you're going to find many of the curses, so you can understand why we don't do certain things. This is Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28, and I'm going to pick this up at verse. Uh, uh, I'm going to pick this up at Deuteronomy 28, and I'm going to pick this up, I guess, at verse uh, verse uh, 30. Now I better pick this up at uh, verse 32. It says, Your sons and daughters shall be given unto another people, and your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in your hand. The fruit of your land and all your labor shall a nation which you know not eat up, and you shall be only oppressed and crushed always. So you shall be mad for the sight of your eyes which you shall see. Yahweh shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a so bunch that cannot be healed from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. Yahweh shall bring thee again on your kings which shall shed over you unto the nation which neither you nor your fathers have known, and there shall you serve other gods with his stone. And this, this is answer that question of why we call all those names, my dear. This is our Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. And you shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations where the Yahweh shall send you. In other words, we would be called by various names, and they have called us by. He told us we we're going to be a, an astonishment. He was going to cause our holy name to cease from among men, and we are not going to be reckoned among the nations. And when you look upon the earth today, we are the only people who are called by a color. Check that out. They call us the black race. 
Ain't no such thing as no black race. Where they get that from? See? But we were called Negroes, Niggers, Africans, Falasha, Bantu, Ashanti, Moor, Coons, Possum, Armadillas, Alligators, whatever the nation decided they were going to call us. And what we did was we went and picked out the ones that we wanted that sound all right to us. First, we call ourselves Corporal Negroes, which is the Spanish word for black. Then we call ourselves colored. Then we didn't want to be colored no more, so we call ourselves Afro-Americans. Then we didn't want to really say Afro, you know, that was kind of a little slang-like, so we started calling ourselves African-Americans. You're not, we're not Africans-Americans. You can look at us and look at the Africans and tell that we are different nation people. And don't give me that garbage about Master slept with all our women. Master might have had one sister on the plantation that he dealt with, but Master wanted some young, strong bucks to work in the field, so Master let uh, them brothers run around like like, 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 like chicken, like wild roosters to get black babies that would be able to work in the fields. So, but when you look at, when you look at certain situations in the Bible, you can very well see that the Hebrews were black also. When Moses killed the Egyptian and went to the land of Median, they thought that Moses was an Egyptian, but Moses wasn't, he was a Hebrew. In the New Testament, they thought Paul was an Egyptian. But Paul said, in Acts 21st chapter, Paul said, I'm a Jew of Tarsus. See, when Christ was born, they told him, said, take the child down in Egypt and hide him down there. Right, hide him down there among the Ethiopians. So you see, and then when you read the history uh, of our people, when Yahweh, if you read the whole Bible and see when Yahweh brought different nation of people up on us to chasten us for what we were, for, for learning their ways, you find that many of our people went down in Egypt and stayed down in Egypt until the calamities were over. And then we came back to our own land. So you can very well see that uh, 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 we are, uh, in this country here are people that do not have a name simply because Yahweh said he was going to cause our holy name to cease from among men and we would not be reckoned among the nations. And today we are the people on the earth that's not reckoned among the nations. Who, okay, let's show you what I mean. When this New World Order, when they have their next conference, or when the, all the world nations meet at the United Nations, who represents us as a people? The federal government. Why? Because we are property of the United States of America. We don't have a king or a prince that go and represent us because we are not a people. I remember back during the Civil Rights Movement, while it was a few teachers was talking about trying to, uh, starting to t wanting to teach Ebonics in school because they say, well, our people understand Ebonics, but the nations told, the, the, the school system told them, uh-uh, if you got a language, that means that you are people, and you haven't got a language, you must learn to speak the king's language while you in this captivity. So you can very well see that we've been downtrodden and held down simply because of the curses that our God put on it. It has nothing to do with the power of the nations. The nations are just a strap that, uh, that Yahweh used to chasten us during this 400 year uh, 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 captivity. But then the prophets let us know that when the Messiah returns, he's coming to save his people out of captivity and put them back in their own land and we're gonna rule the earth for a thousand years with the Messiah in complete peace. And that's what the Christians don't want you to know. See, Satan don't want you to know that. So he told his, he told his children something else and here we are, we believe that lie simply because we do not do the research ourselves. See, and then we lay on that thing when it was good enough for my mama and it was good enough for my daddy. Well, you can believe one thing. When you go to judgment, your mama and your daddy is not going to be there. Only you. So what you going to tell God? Well, I didn't know because my mama said so-and-so. Right, right, yeah. 
then you'd be walking around singing that song. Glad, Miss Jackson, I'm for real. I may I meant to make your daughter cry for telling me that lie she told me. Yeah, uh, uh, but that's the reason why, my sister, that we are called by proverbs and by words, and because we are, we are not known uh, 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 among the nations, simply because it's Yahweh Elohim that has hid us from the nation. Let me read some more of this out of uh, uh, Deuteronomy, uh, uh, the curses out of Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I'm going to pick this up at verse 41. You shall beget sons and daughters, but you shall not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Show me one other nation of people that has been in captivity for 400 years other than us. Verse 43, it says, uh, The stranger that is within you shall get above you very high, and you shall come down very low. He shall lend to you, and you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. Ain't it that way? Everything we get, we get from master. We get our oil, our flax, our wine, our cars, our houses, our pay, all of this we get from the master. And don't tell me while well, I work for a black firm, what you do is you look on that money that black firm got to pay you with and see who pitch you on it. Verse 45, moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and shall pursue you and overtake you till you be destroyed because you didn't listen unto the voice of Yahweh your Elohim to keep his commandments and the statutes which he commanded you this day. And they shall be upon you for a sign and for a wonder and upon your seed forever. Everybody wonder why this, this, this so-called Negro renamed Negro, been in this country here 400 years and all the nations around him coming in here, setting up businesses and so forth in their neighborhood and we're patronizing these people and they're taking their, their monies and spending them in other neighborhoods and our neighborhoods are diminishing and their neighborhoods are growing and, and here we are today, we can't even afford all the nations hiring their own people. You look out there on the streets and see what the Hispanics are doing. The Hispanics came over here, set, start, set up governmental systems in their neighborhood. They started buying businesses and hiring each other. And then they came out to uh, uh, AU Center and got them a program on, uh, uh, on the radio station and then have several TV shows. And you should watch them. They have some good shows on. But the thing of it is, is this, they came together as a nation, they talk about their own people, what their own people do, the contribution that they're making to, <coughs> uh, excuse me, uh, the system is thing, and, and by the way, last year, they sent back over two billion dollars to their country, and we didn't spend nothing like that in our own neighborhoods in this country here. Uh, uh, I think we got another caller on the line, go ahead caller. Okay. Okay, okay, I guess we lost that caller. So that's the reason why we can't do the things that, uh, 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 that, that we want, a lot of things that we want to do. But this, the reason for that is simply because of the fact that uh, Yahweh is the one that has put these things on us. And the only way that you can find these things is to study your Bible. But then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have someone to show you the keys to reading the Bible. This is why I tell you, come by NCCI and you got some questions or so forth, all you have to do is raise your hand, your question will be answered, and we'll answer them according to the word that's written down. But we have to let, we have to know that this is the word of God and not the word of man. Peace and prosperity uh, tonight.